could I have your attention again, please? <laughs> I would like to, to introduce architect Jorge Hernandez. He is a professor at the School of Architecture in the University of Miami, and he is also the chairperson of the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and he is here to uh, talk to you about an interesting project. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, I will just take a second to say how I, it is that I came to know about this event and how I came to know Carmen. I sit on the State Historic Marker Review Committee, so we designate sites important to the history of the state of Florida. And the applications for the three sites having to do with Pedro Campan came before me because Carmen and her group submitted the application. So it was for Matacumbe, for Florida City, and the third site was which one, Carmen? Matacumbe, Florida City, and, and, and downtown, right. <clears throat> and so um, I, I started to um, touch base with her and came to know of this group. I'm very pleased to be here. It's an it's a honor for me to be here with you. I am Celdo Pedro Pan which means I was five years old when I left, and my mother had left with me, So, but she was not allowed to leave the island, and I was not allowed to leave the island, but we left because Polita Grau made uh, falsified documents for us. So for that reason, I'm Celdo Pedro Pan. <laughs> uh, I came with my mother, but with falsified papers, <laughs> made by the same person that falsified your papers. <clears throat> so, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm here really to speak about an event that is going to take place tomorrow on the heels of today, of this event today. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, it's called the Conversación Miami. Uh, as Carmen said, I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And the National Trust, in conjunction with the Department of Interiors, the Secretary of the Interiors, has started a movement around the country to identi identify preserve and protect Hispanic and Latino heritage in the United States. So the trust, the National Trust, has begun the work by having a series of conversaciones. They have taken place already in New York. There's been one in Chicago, one in LA, one in Houston. Many other conversaciones are being planned. Tomorrow, uh, between 10 and 1, in the Mediterranean room, I believe, we will have the Miami Conversación. What is the point of the Conversación? <clears throat> it's free of charge, by the way, so whoever wants to come, as long as you let us know, uh, so we can plan for you. It's, um, uh, the Conversación will do exactly that. We will use our collective recall uh, and memory to identify places of importance. Uh, lists will be made, and then someone from Washington, Tanya Bowers and John Hildreth, two members of the Trust, will start to talk about uh, the types of resources that we come up with when we make our list and how these resources might enter into categories of preservation so that they can start ascending <clears throat> into the legal system for protecting heritage sites in this country and they will be designated uh, maybe not to the same stature but in the manner that the freedom, the freedom Tower was designated. I don't know if you know the Freedom Tower was on the National Register of Historic Places and then four or five years ago, it became a national landmark. National landmark is the highest category that a historic site can attain. So the Freedom Tower had only reached to the National Re or had reached, not only, had reached to the National Register. The reason it was changed from a National Register property to a national landmark has to do with the association with the Cuban immigration. So had the, had the Freedom Tower not been the singular site in a, associated with the early immigrant period of the Cuban immigration, it would not have been elevated to national landmark status. Um, so uh, that will be important work. It's the beginning of a large amount of work that I hope to stay involved in, and I hope that we can keep all of you involved with. Uh, tomorrow will be the kickoff. The conversation is a kickoff, but there's a lot of work to be done, and uh, this, the reason I'm very proud to be here and I'm very happy to be doing this work is that I think that, uh, for I know that many of you don't live in Miami, but there's there will be a chapter of the exile period, which now that chapter is 50 years old, and therefore it's approximately half of the lifetime of the history of Miami. 
We have been here for half of the time that the city has existed because Miami was founded in 1896, so almost half. So for me, it's very important that at some future time when Cuba is free again and when we are one people again, that we not forget <coughs> the chapter uh, on this side of the Straits. So that's why I'm involved in this. Anyway, I welcome you to the conversación. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you here today.